Okay, hi AP Bio. So this is video number two for day four. Um, this is the video about Hardy Weinberg. So I wanted to briefly go over the pre-lab a little bit. So I've made this full key that I'm going to be attaching to this post as well. Um, and um, if you looked at the partial key that I posted, I already worked out some of the problems. On the full key, I gave you um, all of the answers. Um, but I'm going to go through one problem together for us. So um, let's do uh, this problem right here. So it's asking for the frequency of um, these two alleles. Um, the alleles are big B and little v, which are, and the frequencies of those are represented by P and Q. So the frequency of the dominant allele is represented by P and the frequency of the recessive allele is represented by Q. So what it's asking us to figure out is the values for P and Q. This is the information that we're given. And the important thing is that they gave us information about the homozygous recessive mice. And you'll see in a second why that's important. We're going to start by solving for q squared. We're pretty much always going to want to start by solving for q squared because if you think about it, um, black mice are going to, all of the black mice, so we know there's 20 white mice, which means there's 80 black mice, those are actually both the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous mice. Since we can't separate those, um, we don't know which are which, we can't figure out p squared. So we have to start with q squared because we know that all of these 20 mice are homozygous recessive. So we say, okay, q squared has to equal 0.2. This is because the frequency of homozygous recessive mice is 20, the number of homozygous recessive mice, divided by the total number of mice, which gives us 0.2. And remember the frequency of homozygous recessive mice is q squared. So q squared equals 0.2. Then we square root that to find q. Um, if you have an iPhone and you don't have a calculator with you at home, just remember that the way you um, get your calculator to go um, with a square root is to do it sideways. And then you want to click on the button that has the square root with the 2. Okay, don't do the one with the three or the one with the Y, do the one with the two. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see that, maybe. Um, okay, so you square root it, 0.2 square root, and that's our Q, so 0.447. Then we use the formula P plus, P plus Q equals one to find P, that's just one minus 0.447, that gives us P, and there's our answers, P and Q. If we wanted to go on to find um, p squared and q squared and 2pq, we just plug those in. Okay, um, if you want more help with that, I'm just going to remind you again to fill out this Google form with some questions or um, especially respond to this doodle so that we can work on it in person, as close to in person as possible. Okay, next. I wanted to go over one of the big key ideas for Hardy-Weinberg, and I would strongly recommend looking at your textbook, page 405, for more on this. This is um, also part of reading 6.2. Um, so just a heads up that, um, yeah, reading 6.2. So you'll be reading it anyway when you're doing that, but focus on page 405. So um, a key thing for Hardy-Weinberg, basically Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is the idea that we can prove that evolution is not happening if the allele frequencies are remaining relatively constant. Meaning if there's the same amount of the capital B allele and the same amount as the lower and the same amount of the lowercase b allele over many generations, there's no change in the population happening. What is evolution? Evolution is change in the population, so therefore there's no evolution happening. And Hardy-Weinberg principle says that evolution isn't going to happen as long as you have these five conditions. No mutations, random mating, meaning no sexual selection, no natural selection, a very large population size, and no gene flow. 
What this means is, conversely, so in the opposite, if you have any of these five things, then evolution can happen. So if you have natural selection, evolution can happen. It's fairly logical. That's what we talked about on the last day before the last day of class in person, right? We talked about how natural selection leads to evolution. If you have a very small population size, that can also lead to evolution. If you have sexual selection, that can lead to evolution. If you have mutations, new mutations showing up in a population, that can lead to evolution. If you have a lot of immigration or emigration, meaning people or individuals coming in or individuals leaving, that can lead to evolution. And you'll see this in the Hardy-Weinberg lab. Um, so on that, Hardy-Weinberg lab. So obviously doing a lab remote is pretty weird. So I have two options for you. One, um, option one is an online simulation. Um, here is the link to it. It will also be posted to the Google Classroom post. Uh, I haven't added it yet, but it will be there. And um, this uh, link, I will tell you right now, at least on my internet and computer, took a while to load. So I would click on it, step away for a while, and come back. Um, I think I had it pulled up. I wanted to show you what it will look like once you, oh no. Let me see if it has a bajillion tabs. This is what it will look like. So um, once it finally does load, it will look like this, and you will then be able to run an experiment by clicking here. But anyway, this lab packet will guide you through um, what you're going to do with it. Now, if you don't have a laptop, you don't have Wi-Fi, or um, your Wi-Fi is slow, or your laptop's really old, or yada, 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 and you're having an issue with it, that's fine. That's why I've set up option two. Or if you're just feeling confused or frustrated with this situation, that's fine. You can do option two. Um, so option two, I've taken the lab that I actually did last year. I've given you the instructions to that lab so you can hopefully sort of visualize what we would have done. And then I've given you the data that we came up with in class. So all of these numbers is the actual data that we got in class. And what I've written in purple here is some of the sample math, but you should fill in the rest. Um, and then here again, math from last year, and you would fill in the rest, etc. Now the point of this is to guide you through the lab that we would have done if we had all had class together. Um, and I think you'll be able to get a lot out of it, even just from reading through the packet, as long as you give it some good time. And remember, again, if you're feeling frustrated with it, please do sign up for tutoring on the Doodle so you can get help with me and I can explain it more in person. Um, either way, oh, it's not due on Tuesday, it's due on Monday. Either way, this lab packet is due on Monday. Um, I know there's graphs in both of them. That's gonna be hard because it's on a computer. Don't worry if it's driving you crazy. Just don't do it or do it on paper and I'll trust you on our system. Um, I'm going to make it so that you have your own version of each of these. So you just type in on the computer or on your phone. So you don't have to like print anything or anything like that. And last but not least, sign up for tutoring if you would like help and fill up, enter questions on this Google form. The lab again is due on Monday. Reading 6-2 due Tuesday. See you Monday. Bye.